Warning, there's an infectious disease on the loose. It is headed down the Atlantic, straight through the Northwest, and it's headed straight for you. Thank you for that dramatic report on Whoopi Cough. More to follow after this. Whooping cough is an infection caused by the bacterium called Bordetella pertussis. Whooping cough is a bacterial disease that infects the respiratory tract and prevents natural defense systems from removing germs. This causes mucus accumulation, which leads to the continual coughing and sometimes vomiting. In 1906, French scientist Julie's Bordet and Octave Genigiu identified the pertussis bacterium that causes whooping cough. They were bacteriologists, which means they specialized in studying bacteria. The infection causes a violent series of coughing fits ending in a high-pitched intake of breath that sounds like a whoop, giving the disease its other name, whooping cough. These coughing fits can be so severe that patients may vomit, lose consciousness, or turn blue from lack of oxygen. Pertussis usually lasts for 100 days. This is why it is sometimes called the 100-day cough. After these 100 days, pertussis can cause pneumonia, especially in infants. Pertussis can also affect the lungs' function that might result in shortened breaths that can limit activity. The potential for serious and lasting effects of pertussis are an important reason that children should begin their vaccines and receive every dose on time. To protect against whooping cough, children should receive all five doses of DTaP, or the child pertussis vaccine, at ages 2 months, 4 months, 6 months, 15 to 18 months, and 4 to 6 years. Preteens going to the doctor for their regular checkup at age 11 or 12 years should get a booster vaccine called Tdap. Cithromax is an antibiotic used to prevent the spread of whooping cough. If you already have whooping cough, you should rest, drink plenty of fluids, and eat healthy food. Once you have been diagnosed with whooping cough, the best way to kill the bacterium is with antibiotics. If you already have whooping cough, treatment with antibiotics makes little impact on the course of the illness. However, the patient is still usually given antibiotics to make them no longer infectious. Pertussis bacteria usually lives in the saliva of your mouth and the mucus in your nose. Kids usually catch whooping cough by breathing in tiny droplets that are released into the air by other people's coughs and sneezes. In a similar way, colds are spread through tiny droplets in the air. This is why it's a good reason to cover your mouth and nose whenever you sneeze or cough. In the United States in 2012, there were over 41,000 reported cases of whooping cough. In 2008, about 16 million cases of pertussis occurred worldwide, 95% of which were in developing countries and that about 195,000 children died from the disease. As shown in the graph above, you are most likely to get pertussis at the age of one year old. Then you are most likely to get pertussis if you are older than 20 years old. In conclusion, 
If you are between 15 and 19 years old, you are the least likely to get pertussis. As shown in this graph of the United States, there was more cases of whooping cough reported in the western half of the United States. Some of these states include Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. Also, there was the least amount of cases of whooping cough reported in the South in states such as Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. Up next, we have an exclusive and very exciting interview with our very own Pilar Bagshaw, done by your very own Liesl and Dad. Describe some cases of whooping cough that you have seen. Here we have Dr. Bradshaw to answer some questions about whooping cough. So, can you describe some cases you have seen? So, whooping cough is a very serious illness that can be life-threatening, actually, in especially babies under the age of six months. And I can think of many cases of whooping cough that I've seen in my career. I saw an O'Hara student actually just two weeks ago who was a school age kid who came in with a horrible cough. He had whooping cough, but those aren't really the ages that we're worried about. Who we're worried about are young babies. A few years ago I had a family who um, was seeing a different doctor and they asked for me to consult about the cause of this young baby's cough. And while the baby was in the waiting room, I was seeing another patient with my Receptionist came running back, banging on the door. Dr. Bradshaw, we need you right now. And I came running out in the waiting room. The baby had stopped breathing and was currently dark, dark blue. So we called 911. The ambulance came. I rode in the back of the ambulance, uh, helping the baby breathe with something called a bag and mask that gave oxygen and breaths. And that baby actually ended up having whooping cough, nearly died in my waiting room, nearly died in the hospitals many times over because these young babies, instead of whooping, where they cough, 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 and then take a deep breath, young babies with whooping cough have what's called apnea, where they just stop breathing. So this baby stopped breathing repeatedly and ended up having to be transferred by life flight to Dornbecker Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. Can whooping cough, can whooping cough be treated? Whooping cough can be treated, but it's a little confusing for some people because it's not effective to give them Zithromax once they've been diagnosed to treat them. It's too late for them. The reason you give Zithromax is to keep them from spreading it in the community to other people. The best thing for whooping cough is preventing whooping cough, and the way that you most effectively can prevent that is by vaccinating. Is the vaccine 100% effective? You know, it's unfortunate because no vaccine is 100% effective and people who don't want to vaccinate will use that as an excuse for not vaccinating. But it's kind of, in my mind, like saying, I'm not going to wear seatbelts because sometimes people wearing seatbelts get in bad car accidents and die. So it must mean that seatbelts aren't effective. That's not true. Vaccines are very effective. The whooping cough vaccine is unfortunately not as effective as some of the other shots when you've had a full course of pertussis vaccination. You're still only about 85% affected by it or protected by it, but 85% protected is a lot better than 0% protected. And it's not just for you. That's the thing. I very strongly encourage people to think about something called herd immunity, where you're vaccinating yourself and your children protects other people's babies. So how would you feel if you chose not to vaccinate and then you knew that your going and coughing in a grocery store caused somebody who was pushing their baby through that same aisle at the grocery store a few minutes later to get whooping cough and die? 
Is Oregon at greater risk of a whooping cough epidemic? Oregon, unfortunately, is a sitting duck. For, um, Oregon is a sitting duck for infection with whooping cough and other serious life-threatening illnesses because we are the least immunized state in the United States. The fewest people in this state of any in the nation actually go through and follow the recommendations of the experts at the Centers for Disease Control and the American Academy of Pediatrics. So that means we have the lowest vaccination rate, which means we are at the highest risk of having vaccine-preventable diseases start as an epidemic here in Oregon. Thanks for tuning in on this special on pertussis. Who knew? Okay, more to follow next with an exciting game, yet educational and fun, for children in your local schools after this short break. It looks like you need some May Bloomer cough medicine. It'll kill all your sicknesses. <gasps> Yay! <laughs>Who's the Whooper rules? The objective of the game is to infect every person with whooping cough without the doctor finding out who the starting specimen was. First, there is one doctor and one infected person in this game. Second, we will go around and tap two people on the head. If you get tapped once, you are the infected person. If you get tapped twice, you are the doctor. Third, once the doctor and infected person have both been secretly chosen, everyone will line up in a circle around the room. The doctor will stand in the middle of the circle. 4. From here, all the people in the room will look around the circle at each other. If the infected person sticks their tongue out at you, then you collapse to the ground and start coughing. You have been infected by whooping cough. 5. This continues until the doctor spots the original infected person while they are sticking their tongue out or until every person has been infected.